guys, today we are here live with Yara Nemirovsky. I was worried I was going to get that wrong. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I know you've done a bunch of, uh, you've done theater and you sing and all these fun things. First, I want to get into how you came upon the audition for Ridley and what you thought about it at the beginning and how you thought she sounded or, or what her deal was. Like when you, when you lay down the tracks for the MP3, what were you thinking? How, how did you prepare for this? Yeah, so um, we got the audition kind of like any other, you know, I have my little stack of previous auditions in my mom's closet, our booth, <laughs> and um, I don't know, from the beginning I really liked Ridley, I could kind of, I guess, identify with her, you know, she has a little bit of snark, a little sna sass, but she's like, um, she's really nice and, you know, she's just caring for everyone, and in terms of voice, I just use my natural voice, it records pretty high, it has kind of mm -hmm. a bright sound, so um, I don't have to alter it or anything, which I think is really cool, because then it's really like I am her, instead of kind of trying to be her. You know, I <laughs> did the audition, um, and what's actually funny is, I remember I, I had to do a song for it, because she sings, and what's really funny is I actually thought I hadn't done great. Um, so <laughs> when I got the call back, I was just like super relieved, but I was also really excited um, and so, you know, I go in for the callback, I sing my song, and I feel really good about it. Um, and, then, and the callback was in person. Yes, the callback was in person. So that was a really great way to meet a couple people, especially before, you know, everything happened and we were moved to home. Um, were but, you nervous when you went in or you were like, I'm cool, I got this? I was definitely nervous. I get very nervous before auditions, no matter how many I've done. Um, but, you know, I feel like once you're in there, as soon as you kind of say the first line or you sing the first word, you're like, just fine. And you kind of just go through it. And as long as you're enjoying it and you do your best, then those people also know you. Like, maybe the role isn't perfect for you, but they know your voice and maybe they'll find a character that suits you. I think I started about maybe three years ago and it was kind of just a thing where my agent had been like oh do you want to do a voiceover audition and I was like sure it wasn't something that I was like oh I really want to do this but after kind of learning about it it was something that I realized that I really love and now it's like kind of one of my favorite parts about um kind of like this acting theater world and I yeah. just, I don't know if like I hadn't done that. I don't know if I would have been like here today because yeah. since then I've been doing more and more voiceover auditions. And I mean, now I'm Ridley and it's just like really amazing. That the craziest thing. <laughs> You're the name of the main character. How neat. <laughs> so, okay. So you do this callback mm -hmm. and then how much later do they tell you that you booked it? Who, who calls you to tell you? So I think it was a couple weeks later. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I was at my school. I'm pretty sure I had just gotten out of a volleyball game. It was like super random. Um, we're in the parking lot and my mom has my agent on the phone and my parents are both like, oh, I wonder what it is. Not suspicious at all. <laughs> um, and, you know, they kind of hand me the phone and, you know, my agent tells me, oh my God, you're Ridley. And I'm like, what the heck? And then, you know, I get off the phone and I share the news with my parents and it's just kind of this like, really joyous like moment but then I have to go back to normal because I can't tell anybody about it and I just have to pretend that like it never happened um but yeah it was just a really sweet moment I can sing in character but you you sing like for real for real <laughs> um how many songs have you had to sing for Ridley I've, I've caught up on most episodes but I haven't finished it oh okay um I this one. <laughs> um, yes, I think for from the first season, it's around 20. So um, a lot. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. And every time do you practice it a ton at home? Do you have a, a vocal coach that helps you? Do you just go, I got this? Oh, no, I practice like a lot. Like I probably stress out more than I should <laughs> about the songs. Um, I'll get it probably a couple days before I sing it. And usually when I have um because I have vocal lessons almost every week maybe a couple weeks I'll take off but um so I might sing my Ridley song with my um teacher and so then you know it's like refined and like 
really um kind of more yeah, yeah. solid not just like winging it and then I'll like <laughs> stress out probably and then <laughs> um yeah then I'll just kind of go do it I guess then when you're in the booth recording, uh, is there somebody like a vocal coach saying, oh, you know, we got to work on this? Or for the most part, they're just trusting that you're showing up prepared. Um, so Michael and Chris, who are the composers, are always there. Um, and so it's the two of them. They'll li um, listen, you know, one's doing the lyrics, one's doing the music. So if they're like, uh, can you maybe hit this word a bit? Or can you maybe change the rhythm of this a bit? They'll kind of... Um, walk me through it or ask me what they want to change and then we'll just do another take and then kind of do that until they feel like they have a take that's good enough. Is there is there something about recording for Ridley that was one of your favorite parts uh getting direction from Maria or is there a specific thing that you remember that you're like oh that was one of my favorite days? So one of my favorite days is probably I feel like I have a lot of fun now, now that I really know, um, like, Maria and Jen, and now that I know Ridley, like, I kind of just go in there, and I'm just, like, talking, but, um, back, uh, at one of the early episodes, when I had one group record <laughs> before everything shut down, it was just really nice, because, um, I was taught, it's like, you're not doing one line three times in a row, you're doing a scene, you're doing a scene with other people, and, you know, it was kind of a way for me to, kind of associate a voice with a body, I guess, and now I can always picture them when I'm, like, reading the scripts, like, I can picture their voice, so it's not just me kind of doing a cold read, like, I can imagine how the scene would yeah. sound, and so, yeah, I feel like that was, I'm really glad that I was able to do that before. Have your, when could you t finally tell your friends that you were on this? So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like, I told my family and things, I actually, like, my friends knew that I was like recording a show, but I didn't tell them the name. And then <laughs> I was so rude to my friend. I was like drawing it out and out. <laughs> um, I was like, ooh, maybe I'm on this show. Or, Cause Chris had four shows like dropping. So right. I had showed that article to my friend and I was like, ooh, guess what show? And she was like, is it this show? And it wasn't Ridley. And I was like, maybe. Like I was drawing her on and like, making her think yeah yeah <laughs> yeah like on a totally um another show so she was super surprised when she found out it was Ridley is there something that you that was really really difficult like a challenge that you had I mean besides the singing at the beginning uh where you're like oh I'm not I'm not getting this episode or something something's been a little tricky and you know Maria or Chris or someone helped you through I'm always curious when those things come up and how you sort of work through them um, so there's one episode that's not one of the six that is very, like, more emotional and sad. So it's not that it was, not that, like, I couldn't get it, but it was just kind of hard to go through. Because, like, <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm definitely, like, invested in the series. So kind of seeing, like, oh, this happened. And you're just yeah. kind of like, oh, man. Um, and so, I don't know. That was just kind of, like, a sad day. Because um, it's just kind of hard to get through. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, like, I know it'll be, um, it'll look good, like, when it's all finished. So it was definitely, like, worth it. To close off, is there uh, some piece of advice that somebody gave you that you've held on to that helps you uh, stay sane while you're pursuing this crazy career and that gives you hope and, you know, that helps you move forward when sometimes you didn't feel great about the audition or you think you maybe didn't book it, you know? Actually, I remember someone this was recent, but I remember someone saying that, like, it's not, like, rejection, it's just silence in the voiceover world, because, um, your voice, it's, like, there's a character for you, you're maybe not the character, but your voice may not maybe fit the character you're auditioning for, but there's a character that is you out there, and there's nobody that's going to be able to play it except you, and so you kind of just have to wait until it comes, I guess. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Like, this is what we all need to hold on to because we audition for so many things and we do sometimes take it personally and think we're being rejected, but it's just science. Thank you for, for coming on and um, sharing your story with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Guys, keep booming and booping. <laughs> <laughs>